Hey there, it's Board Game Dave. Welcome to another Solo Play Sunday. Today, I'll be soloing a game called Sagrada. This is the third most played game in my collection. I love playing Sagrada. It's a great family weight, lightweight game. And I reviewed it as part of my MVP series, my most played games in my collection series. You can check that out uh, right there. Now, this game typically plays from one to four players in the base game at least. And today I'll be using the solo mode that comes uh, inside this box. Before we begin, I thought you should know that Solo Play Sundays are for charity. At the end of the game, I'll donate my score to a charity and the charity for this week is the Lancaster County Food Hub. I'll talk more about the hub at the end of the video, but in the meantime, if you have a recommendation for a charity I should check out or a game I could play for the next Solo Play Sunday, please let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, let's get to it. All right, here we are all set up for a solo game of Sagrada. Now this is a very difficult solo mode. I've played it nine times already. I've only won one time. So uh, I'm not anticipating victory here, but I also am a, on a bit of a winning streak on solo play Sunday. So we'll see if that holds up today. I do have five tools in play, which is the easiest mode of this game. There's five different difficulties. I think I always play it on easiest. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and start playing and I'll kind of explain things as I go. First thing you might notice that I don't have any of those uh, marbles, those favor tokens. We don't use them in the solo mode. So uh, I always go with the easiest uh, you know, display window that I'm given uh, with that in mind. So here's what we've got so far. Let's see. Now I've got two uh, personal goals, objectives. I only get to score one of them. So I see a green six. That'd be a good place to start. I could put that here and kind of get started. That seems like a pretty strong move to me. Now I only take two dice and then two end up here on the score tracker. And I'll explain the significance of that uh, in a little bit. And I've got a blue three that would not be good here, but I could certainly put it here. That would make a lot of sense. I think that's okay. Although I do like to branch out. So now we take the dice that are left over two and two, and we stick that on the round track. And I'll tell you now that my goal in this game, in the solo mode is for my score to beat the sum total of all the dice left over on the track, which could be as high as 20, or I guess, or more dice. Now, the only way to mitigate that is by putting dice onto these tools. That's how you activate tools. So uh, I would put a color corresponding die onto the tool. So just so you know, that's how it works. So I'm trying to beat, like I said, this combined score of all the dice left over, which maybe you can already see is going to be fairly difficult. So yeah, I don't want to leave sixes and fives and stuff because then that's a lot of points I got to go up against. So let's see now. I need some blue here. I need a three here. I do not want to leave that six for the AI to grab. And I didn't even look at my objectives here yet. Uh, column shade variety. Okay. Thank goodness I didn't mess that up already. Uh, and then threes and fours. So putting a six here would be an okay way to use that. And again, I don't want to leave that. And that would let me use this yellow five here. So that's pretty good. I could also take the four right now, put it here and kind of activate one of these two tools. Um, after drafting, place the die in a spot that is not adjacent to other dice. Using that early is not a bad idea. I could use that right now and put this here, for example, just to kind of get out and about. But honestly, putting that five there seems like a pretty good move. So I'm not going to worry about tools right now. Although, of course, uh, that tool specifically, the cork backed straight edge is, is better earlier in the game, but that's okay. Let's grab four more dice and give it another go. All right, I've got threes and a one. So that's not too bad. I, I want low rolls. And a three could fit nicely right there, although I can't put purple or yellow there, if you know this how this game works. Uh, numbers and colors of the same type and number uh, can't share sides. So unfortunately, that won't help me at all. Now I could take the one and stick it here. That could be kind of helpful. I could also put a three out and then put my one here. That might be a better move actually. So let's try that instead. How about we put yellow? I like diagonals of the same color and such. I'll put the three there and put the one here, but then that leaves two threes. I think I'm kind of okay with that right now. Yeah, so again, I'm already up against, what is that? Oh, that's funny, two, two, four, four, three, three. That's funny how that worked out. Uh, let's see, I'm already up against, what, 18? So, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, that's all right. We got plenty of tools here, and I can also, you know, I could just put a color there or a die there just to, just to activate the tool, you know, or not even activate, I guess is what I'm trying to say, just to remove it from the round tracker. A red six is looking nice, okay. I like that here. And then a green four. Hey, that looks okay to me. I could put it here. I could also put it here. And having the same color in the same column is not a big deal. It's the numbers that I want variety of within a 
uh, column. So hopefully you can see that okay. All right, let's see. Well, that leaves a one and a two. I'm happy to put a one and a two up on the board. That's fine by me. I do have this one right here. Actually, I'll show it to you. Uh, after drafting, swap the drafted die with the die from the round track. So if I don't like these fours or, you know, a five or a six that shows up later, I could swap uh, one out. So that gives me a little flexibility, which is nice. All right, next. Here we go. We're already into round five. We're almost halfway done. This is a very, very, very fast solo game, by the way, if you didn't uh, catch on. I've got a blue six, but that can't go there considering it's surrounded by other sixes. So that's a bit of a bummer. I do want to put that on my board. Uh, I don't want to leave that there. Same with this purple six. But I also want, um, you know, shade variety. So that's not good. That leaves me only this column and this column to use those two dice. But... I think I probably do need to do that. So blue here would seem to make sense. And then maybe the purple six here would also seem to make sense. Well, that's not legal though. I can't do that. Hmm. Rats. Well, how am I going to use these then? Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh, I should have spaced out a little bit more. Hmm. So I've got these two dice. I want to put them out. I can't put this here. I guess I could put this here. I didn't want to do that, but that is legal. And I could put the blue six here. Yeah, not not my ideal situation, but I think I'm okay with that. But now my sixes are, uh, you know, I can't put any more sixes out without messing up my column shade variety and losing four points. So, yeah, now we're going to want to start using some of these tools, I think, as we get closer to the end here. We're in the second half, the back half of the game, and there's three more sixes. So, yeah, I think now I need to start using, oh, my gosh, what are these rolls? Now, a yellow six I'd be kind of okay with because, honestly... That gives me six points if I go with yellow, and it doesn't really, you know, that balances out losing that. So I could just put that there. I'm kind of okay with that. Then I could put the three here. Let me see if I can squeeze that in there. So that would all be legal. And then I could use this to activate the Egolomis brush, move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions. Do I want to do that, though? Um trying to think of why that would be smart I, I can't think of anything that i need to get done like i need to move um let's see let's see i could put gosh i'm not really sure all my dice are pretty much on something that they need to be on okay for for example i could put that there but there's three threes or two threes next to each other yeah ignoring color restrictions i don't see how that's going to help me that much i might not i might not use it yeah that probably seems very very odd but i can't think of a good way to to utilize that ability. No, so I think I'll just use that tool to get that die uh, off of the round tracker and onto my tools. I also need to be trying to get threes and fours, which I literally haven't thought about once. So I've got two threes, I've got one four. So maybe if some fours show up, that'd be kind of handy. Maybe that's where this could come in. Hey, there's a four. I could certainly go for that. I'm just gonna go and stick that right in there. Seize the opportunity, carpe these dice. Is this at a bad angle for you to see? I hope that's I hope that's okay. You can see it okay. You know, honestly, it might help if this was elevated a little bit so you're getting a little bit less of the glare, maybe? I wonder if that would help at all. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, gosh. Okay, that's a, quite the slant, but there you go. Where was I? I put the four there. I've got three twos to work with. So what am I gonna do with all these twos? Uh, this might be a good time to do some of that swapping but that means putting a green two here, and that seems kind of like a waste of a low die. But that would let me get a four onto my board. Hmm. Yeah, but where would I even like put that four? I don't even know. So let's do this. Um, let's put one of these twos out. Oh, how about this? A green two actually fits perfectly right. Oh, that was a two. That fits perfectly in here, and that's the tighter constraint spot. Boop, there you go. And I think I can put two twos there. I'm not too worried about it. Yep. A lot of tools unused, but I uh, think that's okay right now. I think that's okay. Although, if you're doing any mental math adding these up in your head, they're starting to add up a little bit, <laughs> I would say. Okay, there's a four. I like the four, and I'd like to use the five, too, get that off the, off the board. So a five down here I think would be pretty smart. That looks okay, right? Although five there would be fine, five there would be fine. Uh, five could go, that could go almost anywhere. So maybe I'll rethink that in a second, but this four could also go 
here, and I would like that. Okay, nice, and only two points on the board. Hey, this is going okay so far. I've got two rounds left. Oh, you know what, I can only use, oh, okay, I can only use one tool per turn. And I have four turns left. So that means every turn I need to use a tool, which, uh, oof. I just haven't needed these tools, but now I'm feeling silly because I could have put like the purple three here, the yellow four here. I could have put them on the tools just to do it, but I I thought I'd need the tools more. Honestly, this is going uh, surprisingly smooth. So one of these green I'll definitely use. Ah, so that already means one of these tools is not gonna get used. Yeesh. Oh, wow. Okay, so we definitely want to get the six off of there. Oh, and actually, this is pretty cool. So let me do this. I'm going to use my first turn to put the five here, which I'm okay with. And then what I'm going to do is use this green six, get that off the board to activate my ability, which is after drafting, swap the drafted die with the die from the round track. Now, that does mean this five is going to end up on there somewhere, but like, I, oh my gosh, what I can do is since i only have two fours out there what i could do is take one of these grab a four and put a four on my board somewhere i think that does make a little bit of sense so let me replace this oh i'd love to get a yellow four on there somewhere but i can't yeah i can't right now unfortunately so let me put this here now that's like a net gain of one point so uh, you know Hopefully that, that makes us, oh, sorry, not the yellow one, the red one, like so. Because I gave the AI one point, but then I'm getting two points for the set. So we'll see how that goes. All right, and then they got five points for that. And then here we are, the last round. Hopefully there's yellows and purples in here. Although, by the way, I, I did and I do use, like when I'm playing this game, I use the right uh, ratio proportions of dice. So there are exactly eight of each dice. So I guess I could have just counted uh, and I see eight yellows. So those aren't gonna show up and I see seven purples. So there should be one purple in here. Yep, there it is. Which stinks, cause I, again, that's two yellow tools that aren't getting used. So that is unfortunate. And I can't place any of these red dice. Red, red, wow. Okay, this is really upsetting. Uh, I might have to do a little bit of finessing. Although I'm looking at these two tools, I can't use them. So, and, and I can't use the flux remover either, look. After drafting, return the die to the dice bag and pull one dice from the bag. Uh, I mean, I, watch, I, I suppose I could use it. So here I go, I'm gonna put this. Oh wait, choose a value, but that doesn't matter either. Uh, or return it to the draft one. Actually, actually, this actually does sort of matter. So I'm gonna put this here. After drafting, I'm gonna take this red six, return it to the bag, which is empty. And then I'm gonna pull a die from the bag <laughs> and then choose a value. So I'm gonna make it a one and then either place the die or return it to the draft pool. So I'll put that back. And that way I just saved myself five points. So I, I guess that was probably a good move. Actually five plus six, that was 11 points saved. But here's the big problem, everybody. In the solo game, I don't lose one point for each empty window. I lose three points for every empty window. So I'm already negative six, which really stinks. Now let's add up our uh, AI score, which is again, the sum total of all of these dice right here. All right, after some mental maths, it looks like 53 is the AI score. Hopefully that uh, matches what you got. So let me flip this over here. 53, we'll use yellow since Hannah's usually yellow. 53 right there. And let's do my scoring, which honestly guys, I did not uh, strategize at all scoring. I was just trying to put dice on the board, but let's go through and see what we've got. So first, let's start with public uh, objectives right here. We're gonna start with color shade, or sorry, column shade variety, four points for each column with unique numbers. Now the problem is those empty window columns don't count. So I was doing awesome until they remained empty. So uh, that's one, that's two, and then I didn't get that one either. So I only got two, that's eight points. Uh, yeah, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> How would I possibly get to 53? Next, medium shades. So I'm looking for uh, sets of threes and fours. So what did we say? I've got three threes, and I think I ended up with three fours. So yeah, that's three sets. Four, three times two, six more points. That is so pathetic, 14. Okay, and then the last thing is I score one of my uh, you know, private objectives. So green or yellow. Green, I've got 17. 
Uh, and then yellow, I've got even less. I've got 14. That's awful. That's terrible. So I'll go with my 17 for green. 17 takes me to 31. And then we subtract three points for each empty window, which is six. So I'm down to 25. I'm not even halfway to the AI score. So that's the solo AI. Now, I've heard that there's a better solo AI on BGG that's maybe not so punishing, um, but uh, that's the AI. Literally, that's easiest. Now, I didn't play super well. I didn't focus on my private objectives. I botched the columns. I had open windows at the end, and I didn't even use all my tools. So, you know, had I put uh, the four and the three here, you know, that would have knocked the AI down to, uh, what, 46. But even still, you can see, this is a very hard solo mode. I did win it one time with a score of 51. So it's doable, but also very difficult. So anyways, there I am with a final score of just 25. And there you have it. That was Sagrada Solo. Like I said, a very challenging solo mode. So with a score of just 25, we're going to go ahead and send those $25 to the Lancaster County Food Hub. This is an organization that's been around in some shape or form since 1947 with a mission to provide services that honor the dignity of all by striving to meet basic human needs through a three-part vision of one, serving anyone in need, two, honoring the dignity of the individual, and three, welcoming people of all faiths from the community to help provide for those in need. So that's uh, the charity that I'll be donating to today. You can find out more about the Lancaster County Food Hub in the description down below. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for sticking around and spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. If there's other games that you'd like to see me do solo on this channel again, please let me know in the comments down below. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye. If you're not too familiar with, oh no, but I did just drop a green dino. Bear with me. No, I'm not gonna keep that.